It is with pleasure that I come into your home today. Welcome to You Never Knew. My life has certainly been anything but good. We're joined today by veteran detective and legendary author John Cameron, author of It's Me, Edward Wayne Edwards, The Serial Killer You Never Heard Of. There are a few things I'd like to talk to you about. Build a fire in a person and not under him. The whole country has just watched the first episode of It Was Him, The Many Murders of Ed Edwards on the Paramount Network, starring John Cameron. John, welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that this story has finally come out. It's been a long time coming. Now, you and I were talking earlier. Now, this is the first time you've ever even, you've ever seen this. Yeah, that's right. I didn't watch any of the episodes. I just felt like I wanted uh, the world to see him first and get the reaction. So in the episode, though, you, you you hook up with Wayne Wolf Jr., who is Ed Edwards' grandson, and you guys pretty much just met during the filming of this. Yeah, just prior to the filming of this is when we met. He sought me out after hearing about me after my book was released, and uh, I knew who he was for years, but could not actually contact him because his grandmother begged for me not to. So he he actually reached out to you then? Yeah, that's right. And at that time, did he know who his grandfather was? He had looked him up a little bit and read about him on Wikipedia, but he hadn't read my book or anything like that. And so he just called me and I mailed him a book right away. You guys ended up meeting up at your home in Montana. That's where it all started for you. Yeah, yeah, he came to my house. I showed him the murder room, the room where I kept all my work. Um, it's a lot of documentation that I did in the last eight years on that. And he was a little overwhelmed, I think. So help me understand this because I mean, Wayne meets, in, in the episode, Wayne ends up meeting April Edwards, who was Ed's uh, daughter who actually ended up turning him in that would be what his aunt he, he'd never met her yeah that would be his step aunt and uh we got to travel out to ohio and he got to meet with her for a good couple hours now obviously they were aware of who each other you know, were and so forth you know they weren't i know april wasn't aware of who wayne was for forever because it wasn't until wayne contacted me that this all came out that uh she even had a you know a, a step nephew you also bumped into Mike Drew. That's Kelly's brother. That was actually horrible. Um, Mike Drew is a police officer also. And at the time, his sister was one of the victims of Ed's. And I was trying to get information on a murder I had that was very similar to his sister's murder. But it was just a lot of negativity. He did not like the fact that I got involved in this. Now, you actually ended up crying at the end of that. Tell me about that. Well, I couldn't understand why he would not meet with me, why he would not talk to me. I mean, I understand that his sister was murdered, but there were so many other murders that just talking to him could have, you know, maybe I, we could have come up with some more information. He's a police officer, I'm a police officer. We're supposed to cooperate. And so it was really hard to, to be shut down by a victim's family and uh, not understand why. Now, now, when Wayne calls his dad at the end of the show, and now, if you guys haven't seen this, you need you need to go and and, and watch it. But for most of the of, of the public that, that that watch this, you know, they, they watch where Wayne calls his dad at the end of the show, and he's concerned about going on the road with you. I mean, was that difficult for you to take someone on on a journey, let alone Ed's grandson? Yeah, the, we had a lot of emotions between us. You know, it was his grandfather, it was his relatives, and here I was the cop. And so there was a lot of tension actually between Wayne and I, and I guess I was trying to, to make him be a cop and follow me along, and here he was actually more like a victim uh, following the, the cases. I would personally, I think, and I've never been in this situation obviously, but I think I would be a little bit concerned with what you know about Ed and, and how prolific of a serial killer he was and just how disturbed of a man that he was were you at all concerned about being with his direct descendant? Not really. I'd met uh, Wayne's father, who was actually Ed's son, prior to meeting Wayne, too. And uh, I could tell they were decent people. They weren't killers. They weren't going to kill me. But I knew there was going to be a lot of tension as to what I had to say about what their grandfather and their father had done. Now, the Hack Drew murders, Ed was convicted for that one, right? Yeah, that was a 1980 Lover's Lane murder in Wisconsin. Do you think that the Paramount Network did justice in, in this and in, in portraying 
what actually happened here? Yeah, it seemed like they were really fair. They took both sides. You know, people questioned me. Uh, people questioned Wayne. Mike Drew questioned me. I like the way they put that all out there because that really is what this was. It was an emotional roller coaster, and uh, there's a lot more to come. Now I know there's a lot of people who put vast amounts of their of their lives into trying to figure out who the Zodiac Killer is, and and people have assumed and, and made statements that it was somebody other than Edward Wayne Edwards, and probably want to hold to that. Now that it pretty much seems undeniable that that Ed was the Zodiac Killer and responsible for so many of these other murders, do you think that that's going to make it easier in, as you move forward and try to uncover more crimes? I'm sure it'll make it easier for a lot of people to understand, but a lot of people have their preconceived notions as to who the Zodiac was. And if they change their mind now, they've already gone out public and made statements and have hurt other people. A lot of times they just shut down. Yeah, but anybody in law enforcement, I mean, it's their duty as new evidence comes about to, to consider that evidence with an objective mind. And it's pretty clear from everything that, you know, you seem to see now that this is kind of a closed case. Yeah, it's the liability, I think, that officers and prosecutors and judges and everybody have that have been involved in some of these cases that this man did. And now someone innocent has already gone down for it and the real killer's finally identified. There's a lot to lose by coming forward and admitting you're wrong. Yeah, and I guess you've got the, the closure for the victims themselves who went through the you know the tragedy and then and got to whatever point that they got to knowing that the killer was put away and and, and started that healing process. I guess and that might just bring all that up again. I can see resentment for that. Well, I think that's the biggest problem is these victims, you know, many people have gone down for these crimes and the victims believed the, the stories as to who did it. And now... The men that went down for it are actually innocent, so they become re-victimized. And so even victims have a hard time understanding that this could happen. Can, now, what happened when April called in, April, uh, Ed's daughter? She was watching a, the murder case in Wisconsin of the Lover's Lane uh, murder on the news, and she recalled that they lived there at the time and that they fled late in the middle of the night and that her father had also taken her to the scene of a double murder at one point in their life. Now, was that the time when he actually burned down his house when they fled, or was that? Oh, no, this, there was more, more than one time he burned down a house and they fled. No, this was uh, him in Wisconsin, and they just fled during the middle of the night because he felt he was gonna get caught. Now, now she didn't really want to talk to you either, did she? She didn't want to talk to me during the show, but I had actually interviewed her back in 2010 and went to her house, and she shared all of the documents that Ed had saved, so. She was cooperative back in 2010, but when it became such a nightmare of a case, she shut down and did not want to talk to me. Oh, I'm sure the phone calls come from everywhere, and at some point you're just like, I'm done. Yeah, that's the way it actually got through the whole investigation was it got to the point where everybody was questioning, am I making all this up? But really all I was doing was just following the evidence that Ed left. Well, April's quite clearly, I mean, she's actually the hero in this whole, this whole thing. If you can find a hero outside of the fact you know, that you were able to find out who the Zodiac Killer was, I mean, you really have to look to April because she's the one who essentially gave the break that turned her dad in and, uh, and she did that. I mean, it's gotta be tough to turn your father in. You know, it's all about timing and she did it when he was 76 years old and she was in her 40s. And if she had not done that, we would never be here today. Ed Edwards would have never been discovered as to what he had done. So she truly is the key. Yes, yep, she is. So how long ago was Hack Drew? That was in uh, August of 1980. And tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, there was a couple at a, a wedding reception and they just disappeared. Um, they were found months later in a cornfield. They'd been stabbed to death. They'd been bound, gagged, uh, tortured, ended up getting caught. Ed, Ed's uh, semen DNA was found on the victim's pant leg in 2009. Who would have even thought that they'd preserve DNA and that you know, so many years later it would not only open up that murder but so many others, so many others. Okay, now don't take this wrong, but it, it seemed like you were kind of using Wayne to access new info. Oh, I definitely was. That's As a cop, that's what you do. You know, I mean, if you have to use an informant, if you have to you know, use someone close to the family and to try to solve a murder, that's what you should do. Well, I suppose he was using you to try to figure out more about uh, about his father and so forth. So you had essentially the same goals. Yeah, he was he was using me to find out more information. But you know, he was also able to gain uh, access to people that I could have never gained access to. Regardless, I mean, this is a murder investigation, and you, you sometimes you just have to do those things. There's a scene where Wayne is 
looking at where it is that you compiled all this information and once he realizes kind of the depth of the of the research that you've done i mean did he kind of head down that rabbit hole himself oh yeah he definitely headed down the rabbit hole um i had gathered so much information and tied him to so many murders he was very skeptical you know throughout the show which is good because i needed that so you spent quite a bit of time with him i mean you guys see you guys in the car a lot is that just for the show, or did you actually spend time with him? Oh, I spent days and weeks, months with him. Um, actually, at two years in production of the show itself. So, from the very beginning to the end, when it finally came out, I actually never thought it would come out. So, what's he like? Is he is he a, is he a fun guy to hang out with? Did you guys end up going to the the symphony? Uh, no, we did go to a few bars and have some beers. He looks like Ed. Ah, that makes some sense. Yeah, and that, that actually got kind of creepy sometimes to think that I was driving around with, you know, Ed's grandson. How far does the apple fall from the tree? Okay, so John, you have a new book that's come out titled It Was Always Me, Edward Edwards, The Most Prolific Serial Killer of All Time. So what's different about that? Well, after the release of my first book, people that read it contacted me with other cases, and there were so many other cases that I didn't know about. And so this is kind of the extended version of my book with what happened after the release and how many other people he has framed and killed. Well, special thanks out to April because um, without her turning in her father, you never would have gone down the rabbit hole and we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be sitting here today giving uh, closure and peace to so many, so many families uh, across the nation. So, John, I'm looking forward to next week. Will you, will you come back? Oh, for sure. I'd love to come back and talk about the next episode. So, uh, we'll see you then. 